The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and The Tech Insider, David White. And welcome to a beautiful Monday, November 5th, 2012. Uh, one more day, if uh, you don't live in a uh, hotly contested area of the country for the election, uh, you don't know just how much I'm hoping for, uh, what, about 6 o'clock tomorrow night, the ads will stop, maybe sooner. I think probably 6 o'clock. I'll probably run them right up until the end. And then what will happen? We won't see any political ads, at least for a few days. Oh, what will happen? I've not been able to watch any TV for at least three months without a TiVo. Uh, it's just, oh, really, come on. Ugh, just the worst ads. And if you think you're upset about that, just think how upset the people are at the, uh, yeah, uh, at the uh, Sweet Potato uh, Consortium uh, that put on the Sweet Potato Awareness Month. Oh, are they upset? Can you believe it? Uh, they are sick and tired of getting confused with being, uh, with being a yam. Uh, sweet potato is not a yam. Sweet potatoes are not yams, the little buttons say. And it is Sweet Potato Awareness Month. A little sweet potato pie, a little bit of cinnamon on it. I know I'm going to have some sweet potatoes for Thanksgiving. Always, eh, how come I can't have it the rest of the year? Mostly because uh, uh, the Publix doesn't make it the rest of the year, and I'm not going to make it myself. But sweet potato pie, always kind of just a little bit different than your regular sweet potato. It's got such a wonderful color. I probably should have sweet potatoes more. Uh, but it is Sweet Potato Awareness Month, which gives you a little bit uh, of idea how f deep I had to go to find anything about this particular day or month. Uh, of course, uh, tomorrow we've got the elections, and some of the other ones are a little bit more biting or happy. But uh, I didn't have to go just to the day. There was nothing uh, out there for today. be a great day to be something out there if I wanted to have a day. Maybe it's Dave White Day. Mm -hmm. To think about it. Anyway, I uh, didn't go through the day, went through the week, not much there. I had to go to the monthly uh, events to find Sweet Potato Awareness Month. And I like those buttons. I'd probably wear one if I had one. I am not EM. Apparently, uh, they are mislabeled in many, re uh, many places. Uh, people think that they're getting EM uh, in. Uh, they are not. It's uh, almost always a sweet potato. And the sweet potato growers have an axe to grind about it. Anyway, when we look at the markets out here, uh, let me uh, update this real quick. Uh, you know, we're probably uh, getting kind of a little flat here into the uh, election. Uh, it's 14.13, 14.14 on the S&P cash, 1.35 billion, uh, excuse me, 1.85 billion shares on the New York Consolidated uh, Tape. Uh, and we're kind of in there. I'm seeing a lot of, uh, I'll probably call it uh, dollar penny stocks, uh, having a lot weaker time out here. Uh, kind of interesting to see the reaction to uh, Apple. We'll get into that in a minute uh, as we get into the news. But uh, not a whole lot of indication out here. I'm short the market and think I'll probably be st staying short until uh, a day or two after Thanksgiving. Uh, but we'll have to see what the next couple of days bring. Uh, what's going on out there in the news that I think uh, is a, of importance to traders? Uh, right now, for the last uh, six months, 100% of job growth uh, was from government jobs. Canada has not grown. In fact, it's uh, severely weakening. Uh, and earnings of the TSX companies are down 30% just in the last quarter. Uh, Vancouver home prices also have dropped about 3.4% oh, from the peak. A sales surge, uh, sales uh, from uh, I think it's about May. So uh, we're looking at uh, Canada showing the first signs of going into recession. I suspect we'll probably not be far behind them right now. Uh, but our neighbors to the north, which have uh, done a fairly good job of keeping their fiscal house in order, uh, they did a bunch of silly and stupid things and spending money in the 90s. 
in uh, pretty much, uh, actually, maybe even a model for how we should handle our uh, deficit spending. Uh, one of the other things that caught my eye is that uh, uh, there's some ludicrous claims out here about wet stock certificates. Um, there were many things flooded in New York uh, in Hurricane Sandy last week, uh, but there was a bank vault uh, on 55 Water Street in Lower Manhattan, and it flooded all of them. And apparently there were 36 million pieces of paper in there. Each one of those pieces of paper had a huge amount of shares on it. Uh, they were kept, uh, it's kind of unknown exactly how many of those uh, were damaged or destroyed. Uh, my guess is that uh, they'll have the proper authorities go in there and issue new certificates if they can guarantee the validity of those certificates. They probably can. Uh, some people are saying trillion, two trillion dollars uh, on these damaged certificates. I suspect that uh, it's a whole lot less than that, but uh, it's always easier to uh, catch a headline with a trillion dollar headline uh, discussion, which is uh, kind of a little tougher to, to uh, go out after. Let me see. Uh, oh, wrong one here. Need to get back to that. I'm looking. There we go. Um, so we are going to be looking at uh, some of those. Uh, probably bigger things happening other than the election out here, November 8th. Uh, the Communist Party leaders in China, uh, they will have brand new ones. Uh, they turn them over uh, kind of like the 12-year itch or something. I think it's every 10 years or 12 years. Uh, anyway, uh, there's been a lot of discussion of why the next uh, leader of China has been kind of incognito uh, in wondering what's going on. Uh, was he being threatened? Was he killed? Uh, he's popped back up a few times. But uh, uh, the internal workings of China's uh, uh, Politburo are... Uh, uh, kind of a little uh, hazy, and uh, for the most part, they are kind of stuck still in the dogma of the you know, Chai Com era, uh, even if uh, most of them don't believe it anymore. Uh, talking about losing re your religion, and the only reason to keep it is to oppress others, uh, that's pretty much the uh, Chinese communist uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, pro yeah, what would you call it, uh, Pravda, I guess they probably have a little, uh, have a something else. But I always remember Mao's little red book, uh, forcing everybody to go out and uh, uh, farm in the uh, fields and the, out in the country. And, of course, uh, they finally come back to the city and yeah, found some fairly decent uh, success in capitalism, strangely enough. Uh, the first Dreamliner entered service yesterday for United Airlines. Uh, I think uh, just... When you read the reviews of being in a plane like that uh, and uh, look at a little bit of the economics, it's hard to see that uh, if they can actually get production uh, numbers up on this, how uh, Airbus even stays in business, at least uh, in this uh, uh, double lane uh, or double aisle uh, uh, intercontinental a plane, it's going to burn somewhere between 12 and 15 percent less. It can carry 40,000 pounds more. And uh, uh, the maintenance costs of it, uh, be, uh, because it's made out of, heavily made out of composites and out of, not out of metal, uh, the chances of uh, fatigue uh, showing up in uh, the parts are much, much lower. Uh, but uh, just uh, being able to shave 40,000 pounds off an airplane uh, by using composites, uh, also uh, some very, very neat new engines from uh, General Electric uh, that uh, get this superior uh, uh, mileage uh, and power. Uh, probably the biggest change in this between the, uh, uh, between the engines and the composites is this is going to be the first totally electric plane. Uh, there was at least some uh, what they call power takeoff on the engines before. Uh, that ran uh, hydraulics or something like this. Uh, now there's just a couple of generators, uh, and actually they've duplicated it on the engine, so there's one on each side of each engine, so four m uh, massive generators to run everything on the plane. Uh, so there's just a couple of battery cables that run the power back in uh, to the main fuselage now. A whole lot less parts, a whole lot less maintenance. Uh, they at least assume... Uh, because a lot of that uh, mechanical linkages uh, that used to be out there are pretty much gone. Anyway, uh, you know, everybody uh, 
uh, was uh, some fairly decent reviews of being on it, but uh, everybody uh, from the passengers to say how dramatically quieter the plane is uh, using those composites. Uh, especially and the larger windows made it easier to uh, quiet the plane and uh, uh, it's somewhat around uh, about three-fourths as noisy for just wind noise as the uh, typical planes that have been out there but uh, I think Airbus has a very tough road to go. Uh, IPOs this week uh, coming out, Radius Health is going to be RDUS this week, Biotech Developing Treatments and Restoring Bone Loss from Osteoporosis plans to raise 62 million eh, eh, hardly big enough to, to think you can go to a bank and get 62 million singular LX uh, SGLX another one of these uh, low dollar IPOs uh, diagnostic testing for ca uh, cardiovascular disease uh, in a non acute setting I wonder what that means plans to raise 70 million blah 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 Again, not enough money to bother me. The biggest one of this week is Taylor and Martin Group. Uh, TMG is a roll-up of auction marketplaces uh, for pre-owned assets. So kind of an eBay for uh, eh, the United States out there. Plans to raise $165 million by offering 15 million shares at a price range of 10 to 12 bucks. Uh, maybe the one I'll, I'm certainly not going to play it at uh, IPO time, but uh, this one had, probably has the most interesting business model. So we'll be... Uh, We'll be looking at that. Uh, Apple's uh, getting kind of scored out there. We're going to talk about uh, two reasons. Uh, one, Apple was supposed to sell, uh, at least uh, the uh, media was saying that if they couldn't sell 5 million uh, new iPhone, uh, iPad and iPad minis over the weekend, that uh, probably both of the new versions, a uh, slightly revamped iPad and, of course, the new iPad mini, uh, it would be a dud and uh, pretty much dead on arrival. They sold $3 million and tried to pump it this morning. I uh, didn't get uh, very far. Let me get a uh, current quote on that. Yeah, what do we have here? I think it's that one right there. Yeah, it's up three bucks, uh, five dollars or five hundred and eighty dollars and forty cents, fifty-five cents, something like that. Uh, so we continue to see a market out here that's having Apple just kind of hang on. Uh, could you get a bounce out of this? I think you might, but there's just so many people that are still selling this and selling it hard. I suspect that it goes red by the end of the day. Uh, these sales numbers are not doing them any good. Uh, of course, I think that Friday, a lot of the uh, those numbers, uh, people pretty much anticipated, uh, but uh, that uh, we could get even a 10-point bounce uh, today is kind of interesting. I still see, uh, as far as I can tell, distribution in Apple. Um, and uh, if you listen to the Tech Insider uh, part of the hour with Tom O'Brien on Friday, uh, they just continue and continue to lose market share. Most amazingly now, uh, in Asia, it has drastically gone down. Uh, we'll be back after this break and finish up the news. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, Apple's also taking a little heat today. Uh, and uh, why is that? Because uh, they paid 1.9% on earnings uh, Pretty good at uh, keeping almost all the earnings outside the United States uh, in the last fiscal year. And uh, this came from a regulatory filing. Uh, but uh, apparently, uh, the way that you keep uh, your money out of taxable uh, jurisdictions is called a double Irish with a Dutch sandwich. Uh, this routes profits through Irish and Dutch subsidiaries and then to the Caribbean, uh, where I guess you rinse, wash, and repeat uh, but uh, not a bad deal to pay a uh, income tax rate of just two percent in the United States for the largest company, uh, I guess, ever. Right? It depends on if you're talking inflation adjusted or not. But uh, uh, not a bad deal. Uh, everybody always uh, tries to think of Apple as uh, some kind of left-wing company out there. But when it comes to cash, everybody does exactly the same thing, and that is that they try to pay the least amount of. Uh, income tax they can and legally and I would imagine it's probably all legal so no big deal but uh, gonna still probably get a lot of uh, flack for doing that and of course uh, they've gotten so much uh, flack uh, that uh, it uh, is going to be kind of interesting to see uh, yeah, if there's any real uh, uh, ramifications uh, for uh, what they're doing out here 
I was just looking through some earnings and seeing if there was anything else that really looked exciting. Uh, when we go through uh, stocks that are moving there today, are moving today, he said. Uh, let me get uh, my charts up and running. Uh, you know, we've got uh, kind of a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a huge volatile day, but uh, I think uh, by the end of the day, it's probably going to be uh, rather flat. Let's see what we have here going on. Let me go back to my uh, thing. But anyway, uh, you know, we've got some of the usual suspects, uh, but a fairly narrow uh, trading range. Normally, you have at least one or two stocks up 10% or down 10%. Uh, right now, uh, Green Mountain Coffee is off about 2%. Uh, and on the opposite side, the uh, big winner is uh, about 3.5%, which is NVIDIA. Uh, you know, Flextronics uh, up about 3%, uh, a little more than 3%, 2.75% uh, Vertex pharmaceuticals, F5 networks. Wanted to keep an eye on this one because it has been FFIV, uh, been uh, kind of interesting and I've been watching it go through this uh, gap level um, where it's uh, kind of consolidating. We had huge volume day on day on earnings uh, and it uh, got to $81.07 on October 21st. 8.4 million shares. Uh, you're getting for, ready for that retest uh, but you would like it to go down there and, and actually puncture it uh, on very light volume, which is probably not going to be too hard. Uh, you're looking at uh, 8.4 million shares that day, and uh, that isn't uh, going to be, uh, that is probably going to be fairly hard uh, to hit. They have uh, no really lower gaps out here, uh, and uh, the last big major low uh, in this range was tested on lighter volume, in fact, on about 50% uh, lighter volume, which gave a good buy signal. Uh, all the way from uh, $69.60 up to that uh, April 3rd high of 139.46. So uh, not a bad deal. Just this huge volume down day, uh, and it is a doji, uh, normally marks one of two things, either the end of the move or the halfway move down. Uh, I would suspect that you're probably talking about the with that much energy coming into it, uh, uh, it's going to exhaust itself uh, for a, a while. Uh, go back, try to fill part of that gap like it has over the last few days uh, before it at least tries to go back into that $70 uh, range. But uh, all the net workers uh, uh, pretty much have been fairly weak. We looked at Cisco uh, last week, CSO. Uh, we talked about uh, the issue with them on Friday of coming out uh, at 100 million higher than uh, uh, some of their competitors. Uh, 24 million dollar contract, and they bid 100 and oh, it was more than 100, more than that, 124 million, 130 million, or something. Uh, I still see these guys. Uh, they've kind of filled their high volume gap up uh, that happened on uh, what is that, uh, July 16th. And uh, uh, that volume came up on 152 million shares. Uh, we've come back into it. So it's probably at some level of support. Um, I'm trying to remember some, who talked about uh, going uh, long this last week. And, you know, the chart doesn't look that bad. I just don't understand trying to get a dollar out of a $18 stock. Why don't you find a stock that you can get 6 bucks out of an $18 stock? Um, you know, it just doesn't look that much. Uh, could it get back up to 21.30? Yeah, I don't bet it is. Uh, too many competitors. Even uh, HP came in at like $45 million on that contract, which gives you just a little idea of uh, how expensive some of these big companies are. Alcatel Lucent, that's who it was. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and 
provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. As always, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. 877-927-6648. And uh, I can feel you picking up that phone right now and giving me a call. Just, uh, I don't know. Just, uh, maybe you're breathing in or you're breathing out. You pick up that phone call and call me. Anyway, I've got uh, my producer slash engineer, uh, slash disco aficionado in the other room, uh, laughing it up. And so uh, let me call up and give him an earful while I'm actually doing something else. Anyway, uh, we've been uh, talking about uh, some cyclical stocks uh, for Christmas. Uh, if this market does start moving higher, uh, you know, maybe there's a few out there to... Uh, um, the newer... Higher, well, 
what can I say? It's just a cyclical stock for Christmas. A lot of times uh, you always want to be looking for these uh, ones that have big sales. I suspect that especially with the seaboard, uh, New Jersey seaboard and, and New York area, uh, that sales of regular items are probably going to be fairly good if you need a uh, new TV if yours is flooded. Uh, but uh, if you uh, be uh, a little bit different, uh, but Weight Watchers is one that just kind of caught my eye out here. This thing is uh, pretty much like a heartbeat uh, coming into the end of the year and in the first part of the year. Uh, and if we're watching these uh, and you're looking for expansions, one of the better looking ones that you're probably going to find out here. Uh, made a fairly decent ABC. Uh, it's done at 618. Uh, and we can uh, start looking. Uh, this thing is going to turn either right here or go back and test uh, the previous low. Um, and, uh, you know, it's probably down fairly close to support levels. Uh, and whether or not it breaks lower is going to be uh, rather interesting. But we are seeing a fairly nice ABC set up. Uh, how does that start? August 2nd, uh, what is that, $40.60. Goes up to your B point on September 19th. $57.25, uh, and uh, that's kind of light volume. You don't have to have it all. Uh, and then uh, we come back to uh, November 2nd here, which we had our low, of course, on Friday, $46.65. Uh, uh, that gives you a projection, if this thing is not going to break lower here, uh, of uh, $63.30. Anyway, we do have a phone call, and that's Chris. I guess it's from Colorado. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm from Colorado. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I just said CO. I don't know if it's Chris Company, uh, but uh, we're, I guess uh, you want to cross uh, some palms with some silver, huh? <laughs> uh, oh, man, I love you. I love you every day. But wow. uh, isn't, that, uh, isn't that, wasn't the, that the, uh, the like, uh, gypsies or something? They'd always tell your feet shear, but you had to cross their palms with silver or something? Isn't that where that know. saying came from? I think it did. Anyway, I don't know. I think I think people need to look up um, Romani culture and Go Go Bordello, the uh, punk band. Uh -huh. So I'm I'm really wild today. Okay, I'm all over. Cool. So, well, what are you thinking about Silver Wheaton here? Um, my girlfriend dared me to call in. <laughs> and, um, okay, <laughs> and she said, "Oh, um." Silver Wheaton is your favorite stock. So um, I'm a longtime follower of you in um, some place. Okay. Uh, Silver Wheaton, uh, you, well, on the charts, you certainly are not going to get too excited about it. You had to have your last major high uh, back here at uh, $40.36 on February 29th. Ah, a leap day. Yeah, also my birthday. Oh, February 29th? I know that's your birthday. Cool. Anyway, February 29th, uh, $40.36, 11 million shares. Uh, we got into uh, $41.30, uh, 4.2 million shares. I don't see anything much closer to that. So you've made your intermediate high out here. What are you thinking about doing on it? You still own it? Um, no, I've, I've always wanted to, and... Um Wow. Okay. Well, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, if we look at it, the, you know, the energy off the bottom uh, was fairly good. Uh, and uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, look at that 11 million shares to 4.2. Uh, if you're thinking about buying this on a breakout, I would suspect uh, that both gold and silver are probably going to make their way back down to, well, silver probably... Uh, let me get a look at that, but I'm thinking it's in the probably in the $28 range before you even want to think about looking at these uh, yet again. Let me see Perfectly here. Perfectly true, yeah. So uh, I've, I've got to be a lot more patient with with that. And um, I have to say this: um, you said the word astrologist a while ago, like the predictions of astrologer uh, astrologists, and um, they just kind of read energy, just like. You know, people do charts, and um, I had to disagree with you on that one, but I'm a big fan otherwise. Okay, that's good. So, 
Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Anyway, uh, Silver Wheaton, still looking for it to get back. I was trying to actually find my quote on uh, there. Oh, okay. Uh, so what do we have for silver out here? Uh, $31.17. So, yeah, I think uh, we're looking at least 28 bucks before you even want to think about uh, getting back in there. I suspect it could go back to 25 uh, before you have another opportunity to go back and get it. Uh, yeah, we're off, uh, what? 16.84 on gold, uh, but uh, even this could come back fairly severely. Uh, I wouldn't be even thinking about playing these until the day after the election. Uh, Romney win probably means uh, less spending, uh, and probably a good indication that you are thinking about, uh, you know, this thing maybe going back to 1,500 bucks. And uh, eh, you know what can uh, what can you say about that? Uh, I think uh, uh, the you know if uh, we have a uh, Obama re-election, then uh, uh, we're probably uh, fairly quickly going to get gold to start heading back up on uh, probably a continuation of the current policies. Anyway, I appreciate the uh, call, and uh, we'll go on to some other stocks out here. Uh, wanted to look at some other things. Uh, Washington Real Estate. Uh, don't know a whole lot about this. WRE is the symbol on that. Um, and we're seeing uh, uh, 1.1 million shares at uh, uh, August 9th. Uh, and that was at $25.45. Uh, that uh, sets uh, pretty much the low 1.1. He came back, tested it on July 27th with 2.9 million shares. But really, uh, you know, it didn't break. It's still uh, 40 cents higher out here. Um, you know you're going to get this retested one more time. We're finally into that. Um, so uh, we'll have, uh, uh, have a little bit uh, to do with that. But it's, uh, you know, we've got uh, $25 range. We're in that area right now. Uh, we are lower than the 1.1 million shares. Uh, let's see uh, information on this. Let me go ahead and bring it up. Uh, and Washington Real Estate Trust, the equal uh, or equity real estate investment trust company, REIT. Company engages in the ownership, uh, operation, and development of uh, real properties from investing in real estate markets of the greater Washington and D.C. metro region. Hmm. So it probably might be an interesting play on uh, uh, less spending in government also. Uh, but uh, founded in 1960, based in Rockville, Maryland. I don't know if you could do this as a proxy, but uh, certainly is back at support. Um, eh, might be a, another decent play out here. Uh, Teresa Corporation, we've been following uh, this. Uh, another one that has uh, had two signs of strength. I would love for it to get back to the first sign of strength. Uh, Teresa Corporation, TSO, is the symbol. Uh, and uh, what I'm looking at this is the first sign of strength that came out on 8-2. Uh, you had uh, almost 13 million shares, uh, a decent sized candle, especially for this chart. You had the second side of strength on 813, uh, 15 million, a little over 15 million shares. We've come back into that gap from the 813, uh, and this thing is a fairly nice little volume. I'd love for, if the market would come back to try to catch this thing back around the $28 range. Uh, Tereso, I think that's how, or Tereso? Corporation, together with the subsidiaries, gauges in refining and marketing petroleum products in the United States that operates in two segments, refining and retail. Uh, so maybe not a bad indication that uh, we've got a fairly uh, uh, decent market out here, at least stable market for crude, although I think it's uh, coming back into that $82 range. Uh, Teradata uh, is another company, of course, in the tech sector, um, mostly... Uh, working at another good sign of strength, uh, but then a sign of weakness uh, that was tested on Friday with heavy volume. So you know you're going to come back here and test this one more time. TDC is the symbol. You took off with your sign of strength, and that happened on the 9th of February. Uh, it came up with uh, 5.6 million shares. Uh, tried to get back into it uh, with 3 million shares on July 12th. And, of course, the last couple of days here, uh, it's got slammed down on very heavy volume, 8 million, or 8.8 .8 million, almost 9 million shares. That means we're going to at least come back into here one more time and see and test that low. Uh, but, uh, you know, could we get back down into the 
uh, $58 range on this. I think we could, uh, but you certainly have that sign of strength. Uh, and if this market would turn, I am short now, uh, but I could turn on a dime if uh, things uh, changed. Uh, but I continue to look at this, uh, uh, you know, as a good probably sign of sport in uh, trying to find a lot of these. There aren't a lot of them out there. Q Logic's another one uh, out here testing uh, its previous lows. Same kind of thing. You have these huge move downs, which are your, is your exhaustion move. You recover a little bit during that day. Uh, we're coming back in and below that. That exhaustion move happened on July 27th. Uh, QLGC is a symbol, by the way. Uh, that July 27th low out here, let me zoom in just a little bit better uh, for you uh, uh, Tiger TV aficionados. Uh, $9.56 on July 27th. Uh, when we see that low, 12 million shares, the exhaustion day, you know you're going to get a probably get a bounce out of there. Come back and test it. And you've had exactly what you would like, which is low, low volume uh, as it goes sideways out here, which is... Uh, Decent side of uh, maybe some uh, accumulation. Uh, don't know quite yet. You need a close back above uh, $9.56, and it to continue, continue to have this very, very low volume, but you don't have a buy signal back in that. But QLogic, QLGC, uh, might be an interesting uh uh, symbol. Uh, you can call in just like our previous caller did, 877-927-6648. Hopefully you won't have to be uh, uh, goaded into calling like our uh, previous caller, but uh, it, uh, Chris from Colorado, uh, but it uh, would be interesting. Pioneer Energy Services, another one in this energy sector uh, that we've been watching. Uh, so we're probably getting uh, close to some fairly decent support levels uh, in the uh, markets. So uh, now, uh, what I look at Pioneer Energy is PES. Uh, it had its major low on October 4th, uh, $5.83, 1.6 million shares. Uh, so we've got about, uh, what, 50 more cents lower to get back into that. So we're going to be watching this one. Uh, but uh, you had 1.6 million shares. Uh, you know, we've had uh, fairly light volume over the last few days also. Uh, so, but uh, you need $5.83 to get tested. Uh, and if it did, that would probably be uh, the end of the consolidation level of Pioneer Energy. Uh, and, you know, at $5.83, you've got several lows, uh, even just a test of the $9.37 high on September 17th out here uh, would be a great trade out on this one. Uh, but uh, as we're looking at uh, volume, uh, 700,000 shares or so. Um, you just need a few more days as we come in back into those lows. Uh, OCZ, uh, this thing, uh, eh, been kind of uh, basing out. Uh, we're going to have to continue watching this very closely. Uh, they need to refile some of their earnings. Earnings after the bell tonight. Uh, if you're looking for a penny stock with some probably some action, this is going to be one. Um, there was a little bit of discussion of Apple buying them to uh, make their drives for their laptops and some of the new tablets uh, with a lot more storage. Uh, that uh, kind of fell through, but uh, there was a nice little bounce out here on Thursday, uh, kind of on the end of that room where we're back into it. Uh, but uh, watch that one tomorrow. I don't think I'd be playing it too much after hours. Omnicare. Uh, seeing a lot of these healthcare stocks uh, uh, right up here at these highs, uh, tested them on lighter volume. Uh, and we continue to think that uh, on Wednesday, uh, these things are either going to make or break uh, being in that sector. Um, when I'm looking at it, OCR is the high on April 3rd, $36.48, 5 million shares. Uh, you came into that uh, with 2.6 million shares, so another 50% test of a high on lighter volume. Uh, and uh, not a whole lot of energy when you look at this. Uh, you had a nice, decent pullback, lighter energy back up to the top. Uh, you know, on uh, an Obama victory, could you see uh, these maybe uh, start to break out? Yes, and uh, maybe fail on uh, a, a Romney presidency? Uh, probably some things that we need to be watching very closely. Uh, we'll bring up a karate kid when I come back uh, on a few of these because I think it's better to react then act and uh, we learn from the Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi, I liked him.
Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And as we come back, we're going to look at a few uh, more stocks. You've got about four minutes if you'd like to call in, 877-927-6648. Uh, kind of a quiet time here before the election. Probably the uh, quiet before the storm we're going to see on Wednesday, uh, if the election is settled by Wednesday. I suspect it's uh, probably going to be settled fairly early tomorrow night, uh, and uh, we'll find out. Uh, but I think we're probably going to, by uh, eh, probably 11, 11.30 uh, Eastern time, we're probably going to know fairly uh, well that the, uh, the election's uh, pretty much done. Uh, one of the other ones we're looking at here is NTAP. 
uh, some of these other uh, companies that are starting to make lows back on these uh, huge uh, exhaustion low days. Uh, NTAP is a symbol we're looking at. Uh, the May 24th low at $27.79, uh, 54 million shares. Uh, so we've gone down that. We've gone below it. Uh, we haven't had a lot of volume yet. Uh, the tendency is going to be for this to pop back up into the $27.79 range and, or above and get a close, which would be your first buy signal. Uh, but uh, since we really haven't had that kind of volume, uh, it's continued to meander lower. Uh, it can continue to meander lower. Uh, you need that buy signal that we have not gotten yet. Uh, and uh, kind of uh, Maynard Keynes had a real uh, great uh, saying. He said, markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Uh, and uh, that's probably why you need these things to come back in the trading range before you can start playing them. Uh, but in TAP, there, there are several stocks out here that look like they're getting uh, fairly oversold. Uh, and with a high short condition, these are some of the ones we're probably going to be watching uh, if this mark market does tend to uh, move around. I am uh, short the uh, I am short the uh, market, uh, but uh, we are uh, uh, thinking that. Uh, you know, it may be wise to have some of these stocks in your back pocket uh, that you're looking at uh, that might just uh, move back. Uh, some of the other ones, if you are short, uh, that I've been tracking, uh, hunting. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if anybody's seen the, the actual picture out here. I mean, the uh, what is it like on the Discovery Channel? They've got Manhunter, guy on a horse chases a bunch of people down. Uh, it looks a little bit uh, contrived, but uh, Fossil is one that I've been tracking here, watching all the little leaves move out here in the blades of grass. Uh, this thing came down on monstrous volume, uh, went down lower, came up, uh, had a little sign of strength, uh, has been trading up here slightly higher, uh, but it's now getting into what should be fairly severe uh, resistance levels. F-O-S-L is the symbol. Uh, came down on uh, May what, May 8th out here? Yeah, May 8th uh, on 20, almost 21 million shares. It's getting back in, starting to fill that gap. Uh, could it get into 105 bucks? Eh, yeah, it's more of a market issue right now. Uh, it is uh, going to be uh, uh, that. Anyway, we had a question in the den. Uh, I've got about a minute here. I'll try to an uh, answer it. Uh, and the question, uh, or the I guess the, uh, the question is uh, a new Nexus product on Tom's show Friday. Uh, it is the Nexus 10. It is a 10-inch tablet up to this point. Uh, and uh, Apple, or not Apple, but Google's only made their 7-inch product. Uh, the 10-inch product is absolutely smoking hot. Uh, it is going to be 500 bucks. Uh, I suspect it is going to be better than the current iPad uh, in at least hardware. Uh, they It looks right now like... Uh, uh, at least Google and their uh, minions at Asus that design these products uh, are getting much faster at the design cycle than Apple is. Uh, maybe not as worried either. I think uh, Apple has a little bit to worry about, about uh, uh, revving people out of the market and just finally getting their customers ticked off. That, oh, I bought a new one. Oh, that's the old one a day later. Uh, but that Nexus 10... Uh, is the 10-inch tablet, and boy, is it smoking hot. Got a lot of features. Um, it's for the mid-price, uh, I think Apple's uh, regular iPad has a lot to fight. But you can Google that and see the reviews. We will be back tomorrow. You had a great and safe night.